Right, my bait all. Let's see what we've got this time. There'll be links down below, as always, for things I can give you links for. A bunch of ring terminals. 35.6, 58, and 35.8. 35, for example, is the cross section where we have the actual cable which goes in. 8 is the size of the hole. So these are both 8 mil holes, this is a 6 mil hole. The thing with these, hardly oh, actually getting decent quality ones. The actual metal on these is quite thin. We'll see how we go. You know, I would actually like to see these being a bit thicker than they are. They do look a little bit thin for liking. These are some active balancers. These are used for like, things like lithium ion phosphate batteries, for example. Now, this is an eight cell balancer. It's got eight LEDs in it as well, which is nice. So, this is for doing eight cells on a lithium ion phosphate battery, is what the intention is anyway. And basically, what it does is it will get the highest cell dump power from that into the other cells. Um, I've got two of those because I've got two batteries. And I was looking at whether or not I use these or whether a different type, I don't know. But there's a closer look at it. So, it basically uses inductors and it uses that to switch between each section. I don't know exactly how these work, I've got no idea. I haven't actually looked into it that deeply, but it's an inductive active balancer. So I believe it will actually show up which cells are working. Now I think it can only actually, I think it goes cells which are side by side, or something like that. There's something weird about these, I do remember seeing. Is it any good? I don't know, I might do some testing on it and actually simulate some stuff, maybe. Maybe I'll do a video about it, I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe. I could do. empty no it's a uh, protecting glass for iphone 13s like i've got some iphone 13s recently myself and wife got one and we've got cases for them but cases don't actually offer any kind of screen protection at all it's just completely open screen so i thought i'd get some of these hopefully they'll actually fit inside the casing maybe i can get the phone i'll stop my wife's phone for a minute she's coming out of the room let's see will this actually fit inside there Oh, yes, it will. That will fit inside that opening. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Well, as soon as I've got the phone sitting here, let's actually apply the film, shall we? Let's give it the phone a quick clean. Try and get it lined up. Film is on. Still works. Brilliant. My wife's phone really needed this. Don't tell her. You break stuff all the time. Multiple packages in here. It's just all right. Put that in here. I think they're both the same. ADS five A. Yep. So they're both the same things. It's another balancer. This one's a knee active balancer, and you've got some options down here: NCM LFP or LTO. Obviously, it's in the LFP option there, and we've got a run option there too. So basically means it's always on. If you want to put this on a switch, you can actually break that solar connection there and run it to a switch. And when you turn the switch off, open circuit, the balancer won't run. And when you turn it on, it will run, which means you can actually have this thing connected all the time. And then you have it active when you want to do like a top balance. So you've got your battery sitting at full state of charge or something. Here's the back of it. There's quite a bit going on this one. Lots of MOSFETs. So I've got two of these, one for each battery. And this is a capacity balancer. So this one here. There's an inductive, and this one is capacitive. Basically what it does is it charges a capacitor and switches that across the other cells in order to move charge around. I'm not sure how the inductive one works, like I said. And it comes with these quite chunky cables, actually. Pretty chunky. Anyway, I'll push it on later. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. They weren't that expensive to get, so, yeah. So these balancers, to explain why you even want these things, on lithium ion phosphate or some other chemistries, you've got individual cells in a battery, right? That's what they're called cells. And the battery's called a battery. What can happen is you can get a cell which is slightly weaker or slightly stronger than the other cells, and that can then cause an imbalance in the battery over time. Now, generally, it doesn't really be that much of an issue. As long as they're initially balanced correctly and you start off at a good point, you should be kind of okay. It's sometimes good to periodically balance the batteries and just make sure that the, the balance is still okay and doesn't go too far away, because... Your weakest cell is the one which determines your battery capacity, basically. And the strongest cell is the one which determines how much you can charge it. So if your strongest cell is way above all the others, you won't be able to charge the battery pack fully. And if your weakest cell is considered to be weaker than the rest, 
you won't be able to use the capacity of the battery properly because that would be the one which goes flat first and that's it, it cuts the battery off. This is why you want balances to make sure that your weakest cell and your highest cell are brought down and brought in line with all the other cells to try and ensure that it's all around the same level, uh, same state of charge, same voltages and that sort of stuff, as much as possible anyway. And this is what these are for. They're just two different methods of achieving the same thing. Like I said, I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. I mean, this one's chunkier. I think this one could do more current. I, I don't actually remember. I might go and look up specs, maybe put it on screen or something. But if you're doing a battery which doesn't tend to get discharged daily, for example, you know, it's just used occasionally, it doesn't get fully discharged, you may not even need to use an active balancer. You might be able to just get away with using the passive balancers built into the BMS. Now, the batteries I've purchased recently, one is balanced fine. The other one is struggling a bit because it's got one cell which is much weaker than the rest and one cell which is stronger than the rest. So there's an imbalance between those two cells which is hindering the battery pack a little bit. That may come right over time because that one weak cell may be just be, it needs to be absorbed more and, and it will catch up eventually. And the passive balancer may be able to handle that. The other battery, so exactly the same, it's identical. That one's fine, that's working perfectly. So this one battery is looking like one cell may be dragging it down slightly, one other cell is really good. So it's like you know it's a combination of one bad one, one really good one, rest of average sort of thing. So I hope it will come right eventually by itself. But I've got these thinking if I do need to put a balancer in there, an active balancer, I've got different options. I mean this one will fit. I think this is like my second choice, this is the primary choice. If this fits in the casing of the battery okay, then I could use that one. If it doesn't, then this one's a much more slim line, it can fit into a tighter space, so this will be one I end up using. So that could be well I've got two different types, I can't do them by now. That's what they're for. Just to make sure your battery's balanced, otherwise you can't get your full capacity out of the battery. Because you'd be limited on charging or limited on discharging. Alright, last thing. Or well, maybe the last thing, I might add more video on later on if I get some more mail before this video comes out. Before I edit it, I might just add more mail on, so let's see. Have some pre-made battery cables. My existing batteries have got some links which I made up, and to be honest, my crimping wasn't the best on those. I didn't actually have the right crimp tool to the size connector at the time. Now I've got the right cable and the right crimp tools and stuff like that. I could just make some more ones, but I thought I'd get some pre-made ones, because sometimes there's been many situations I wish I had some pre-made cables, I'd just snap them on and not worry about it. And I actually want to do some changes as well for the layout, so I've got some different lengths as well pre-made, so it is obviously for doing like battery to battery interconnects. I think these are only 20 centimeters. these ones. Yeah, 20 centimeters. These are actually a little short for my current batteries, but it'll be useful for something else in the future, I'm sure. And then we've got these ones here. These are one meter long, so 35 more square cable. It's nice that they would label them. So one meter long cables. And what are these ones? Uh, these are 60 centimeters, 35 more square as well. I think it works out as full gauge, which is um, good enough for most things. Doesn't say exactly on there, but yeah, it's just all Chinese writing. If you don't want to mess around making up yourself, you can buy them pre made. How good are they? I don't know. I mean, these terminals look nice enough, they all look like decent quality. These weren't that cheap, I think, because mainly because of the cable cost. The cable's expensive to get these days, copper's just expensive to buy. The terminals themselves are cheap, like this one here is relatively cheap to get because the cable is really short. But the longer you go, the, the price it gets quite a lot more. I bought these as pairs, obviously. But I, I just want to do some rejigging of my setup in there. And I want to potentially use some of these cables to do that as well. Anyway, that's that. Maybe some more mail bag after this. If not, get you later.